Hello, I'm Sherry Tunney for the Marine Canvas Training Institute. Today we will demonstrate the making of a convertible top with side and aft curtains. We'll show you how to lay out the patterns to avoid waste and how to cut and sew them together quickly. Our goal, as always, is to demonstrate how to increase your profits through the efficient use of materials and labor, while at the same time turning out top quality marine products. Let's meet Don Wedge, president of the Marine Canvas Training Institute. Hi, Don. Hi, Sherry. Don, even though your students may master the skills that have made you a leader in the canvas fabrication industry, just how important is the material that they use? Well, Sherry, the materials that we use can make the difference of whether we turn out a product that we're proud of and that our customers have come to expect for quality. So where do you go to get this top quality material? Well, Sherry, we use mainly Unitex, who is a national supplier of Sumbrella and Gore-Tex thread. The reason we use Unitex is because they are good with their service and competitively priced. Tell us about Sunbrella. Sunbrella is manufactured by Glen Raven Mills in North Carolina. It's the material that's guaranteed for five years and it has a full color line so that we can match our customers' wants. And Gore-Tex sewing thread? Well, you use Gore-Tex sewing thread because it's the only thread I know of that is guaranteed for the life of the product. So it's safe to say that by utilizing Sunbrella material, Gore-Tex sewing thread, and the services of Unitex, you're pretty much guaranteed a top quality product. That's right, Sherry. Now we can go back to work. Okay. Good morning. We're going to show you how to sew a convertible top together this morning. Before we start, we have all the parts laid out here on the table so that we can show you one more time what all the parts are and then Becky will start showing, or sewing them together. So Becky, if you want to point out to them, we'll start right here at the front. We have a three-part front. And the reason we have a center panel that's loose from the side panels is that's going to be the walk-through panel, which will be zippered. And it can be rolled up so that you can stand up in the convertible top or walk through it. The next item behind that is the center pocket that supports the mid frame. The item behind that is the main body of the top or the aft half of it. The next item behind that is the pocket that supports the main frame on the aft end of the top. You'll notice the cutouts for the straps on each side. Behind that is the five inch piece that will be sewed in half to make a two and a half inch flap which will finish two inches and that's the flap that's sewed on the aft end to hold up the aft curtain. On each side of it we have a two and a half inch piece which is the facing that will be sewed on the underside of the top to give it a little bit more support for the zippers that are going to hold the side curtains up. And that is basically all of the parts that go on the top with the exception of the vinyl reinforcing strips that we've pre-cut ahead of time. And all they are is pieces of clear vinyl that we're going to sew on this particular top. But again, the reason we have to use something like this is so that we can support the snaps across the front where it snaps to the boat. So she's going to start sewing. And again, in order to save time and get this job done, not just for the purposes of a video, but for you to make money, if you learn to do it in a certain sequence and sew from one piece to the other, you won't have as much time used up in starting and stopping your seams. So what she's going to do here is hem the end of the aft pocket by a half inch. Instead of cutting the thread here, she's just going to leave it lay there bring the other end of the pocket around and sew right off onto it. Again, we don't cut the thread. She leaves it, goes right over into the center pocket and hems both ends of that.
The next item she has to sew is the flap. She's preparing that for the back. And that was a five inch wide piece. Now we don't hem the end of it because we do that later as we put it on. Oops. But we do fold it in half and sew down the fold. And the reason for that is it wouldn't necessarily have to be done, but because of the nature of acrylic, it makes it a lot easier to handle if you'll sew it down the fold. That way it has it exactly in half. And by doing it this way, if you don't fight with it when you're sewing it down, you won't get the little ripples that you get in your material when you put a hem in it. you're out of bobbin, aren't you? Yep. Always run out of bobbin right in the middle of a project. So now you can learn how to change a bobbin. Maybe. While she's changing that bobbin, let me talk just a little bit about tensions using Gore-Tex thread. Your tensions on your machine when you're sewing acrylic, irregardless of the kind of thread, have to be as loose as you can get them and still have the stitch lock in the middle of the material. It's a lot more important when you start using Gore-Tex thread, otherwise it'll have a tendency to skip stitches if you're not using the right needle and you don't have the tension set correctly. So before we start sewing on a project, if we're using acrylics and Gore-Tex thread, we make sure by using a scrap piece of material that we have our tension set as loose as we can get them and still have the stitch lock in the center of the material. See how fast she did that? Here's the center panel, which is going to be the walkthrough panel. And what she has to do is turn this upside down and sew facings on the two sides and the forward edge. Why? Because the forward edge is going to have snaps to snap it to the windshield. And the two sides are going to have snaps put in them to support the roll up when we roll it up. So she's laid them around the three sides and just going to sew right around the whole thing. Alright, the next step is to bind those three edges because that finishes this, this particular item on the top. Now you're all going to catch us and find that we're using a grape binding on a burgundy material. The reason we're doing that, we wouldn't normally do it for a customer, but we're doing this so that we can have a little bit of contrast for you to be able to see it. And here's all the pieces that have to be bound now. We've got to bind the three sides of this center walkthrough. We have to bind the two sides of the panels that go to it, which she'll do next. And again, instead of taking it out of the machine, she's just, just going to run right off of this piece onto the next one with her binding. Now this is the edge of the forward quarter of the top that zips to the center panel. There's the other quarter. And here's the aft pocket and these are the cutouts for the straps so we bind those. <coughs>
And again, I'm using a combination of black and white zippers on this project just to give you some contrast so that you can see what we're doing. So I'm going to use white continuous number 10 YKK zipper on the walkthrough. What we do here is cut the continuous zipper a little longer than what we need. And all of these allowances have been made a long time ago. So if you're going to start changing something, think about what you're going to do. Because what we're using here, we're putting one half of a piece of continuous zipper down along the inside edge of the walkthrough. And we're using the stitch line as a guide. So she's going to lay the edge of the zipper tape right to that stitch line. There's a little change in the weave on the tape on the zipper. So that's the guide that she's using to sew to so that she doesn't get her seam too close to the teeth so that the uh, slider would get bound up in it. And she's going to put one on the other side. Then she has to put the other half of the zipper on the other front quarter of the top. And you'll notice I cut the zippers a little long and she's trimmed them off there. But on these pieces, we leave the zippers a little bit long so that we got something to get a hold of when we want to put them together. And again, she's going to leave this zipper hang out over the aft end of this. What she's looking for is where the stop is supposed to be, and it must be something that we didn't mark, but we are going to mark. And see how the system keeps working for you? This is where the stop is going to be. Now, she's going to sew this zipper on with it hanging out over the aft end so that she's got a tab to hang on to, and it has to be put on back so that it's with the teeth off the edge of the binding. And again, what you're using as a guide is the edge of the binding and the edge of the tape. And again, this leaves it so that the slider doesn't get hung up in the binding. She can sew right off of that, right onto the next one, which has got the other side and the other half of the continuous zipper. Now we got all these zippers on, we got, now we got to put it all back together again and hopefully it'll come out the same size as the pattern that we made when we patterned this job. And if we've done everything correctly, it will. So the reason she left this tab hanging out is so she had something to hang on to to get it started. You want to do it, Vic? Okay. Now what she has to do up here is make sure that the two edges of the top right here are perfectly even. And the easy way is to put a dot on this half of the zipper right in line 
with where the end of the other half of the zipper is. That way when she gets the slider on there, she's got the tab sticking out to hang on to. She can bring the zipper slider down to where it just about covers that dot and tuck the tooth in and it gives her something to hang on to on that tab to get it started. And what she's checking there is to make sure that that tooth went into the same mark where the dot was. It didn't quite hit. If it's off one tooth, it makes the difference of whether this comes out the same as the pattern or not. It takes a little bit of practice to get this done, but once you get the feel of it, it doesn't take that long to do it. But of course, when we're trying to show off, it'll always goof you up, so. Then usually what do it, we get a little bit upset because that sticks like that. And the reason that's sticking, these are a locking zipper. Now move it back and show them how to put the stops in and cut it apart and weld it, Becky. Zipper? What do you need? You Piece of zipper. And... You need a stop, two stops to put in, all right. Okay, what, what I'm gonna do ahead. is take this in my fingers here Take the zipper and separate it. You can squeeze it in like this. This is what it looks like when it's in. Do the same thing to the other side. If you start it and kind of teeter it in, you know, put the teeth like this and teeter it in, you can get it in just like that. Take your hot knife. Burn off your ends. Don't burn your finger. Lay the blade so that it's flat and on the teeth and blow while you're melting the teeth because the fumes that come up off of this will make you cry. That's what a welded tooth looks like. Repeat on the other side. Let it cool down before you touch it. Now she's gonna, why don't you turn it around and show them how to finish the other part, Becky. Welding teeth together. Doing what? what she's gonna do up here is cut the other half of the zipper off. Then she's gonna cut down each side of the teeth about an inch. And cut those teeth out and throw them away because she don't wanna have to sew over them and break a needle. And she's going to take the hot knife and weld those teeth together for about an inch so that the zipper can't come apart. You'll notice that we have done the same thing on the other side that we did on the first side as far as the continuous zipper. Now the front half of this top is prepared to hook to the aft half. So the next thing we'll do is I'll have Becky lay these parts up here in the relationship in which they have to go together. What we're doing here is sewing the forward half and the aft half and the pocket together all at the same time. Okay, the reason why I knew which way to lay this pocket down, and this is critical, when this top is sewn final. This pocket is going to be sewn on the underside like this. You're going to see finished edges along here. So if you take it and lay it up the way it's going to be when it's finished, with your notches together all in the center, you take your, your pocket out and bring it out and lay it on top. That way when it's sewn and brought around and top sewn, you're going to have finished edges right along here on the underneath side because you can get real confused on do I lay the pocket on top or do I lay it on bottom. It just depends on whether you have this up first or the main body of the top up first. But always lay it up the way it's going to look when it's finished. Line all your notches up in the center and start at center 
and sew out to the end, flip it over, start at center, and go out to the other end. The reason we do it this way is to prevent a lot of stretch, because if you were to start at this end and come up along here, chances are when you got to the notch, you wouldn't have all your notches stacked, and when you continued over here, you'd be off. This way you're controlling half of the top and the stretch, and not having to worry about the whole thing at one time. Okay, when you're holding this, you're what you're going to be doing is sewing two opposing curves. This curve is going this way. This piece, the curve, is going this way. So what we're going to need to do when we get over to this area is work these pieces into each other so that we don't create any stretch along this bias cut. To prevent stretch, what I do is put my hand underneath the top piece and grab it away from this edge. If you hold all your material right here, what you're going to do is pull and tug on it and you're going to stretch these edges. So make sure that you grab the piece that's on top in your hand away from the where you're going to be sewing. You can use this hand here just as something to put a little bit of pressure on your pieces to keep them lined up. And you can see I can take this top and I can move it just like this and that, that changes whether the fabric is, is over here or I can go like this. So I can steer this fabric just by moving it like that. And all I'm doing is laying the pieces up and just the pressure of your finger down like this will hold it in place long enough for you to sew from here to here. Here's why we cut the teeth away when on our front part of our top because our foot is going to have to go through here and if you had all the teeth stacked in here it would be too hard to go over it. Okay, here's the part where you're going to have to do the steering. I've got this hand underneath on top of here to kind of move it around and I've got this hand here to move this piece around. So all I'm going to do is move these back and forth like this so that I can steer the edges. And these fingers come on top to hold it down in place once I've get it, gotten it where I want to hold it. Just sew up to your finger and even if that means two or three stitches, do that and stop. You can see how I'm steering the fabric right along here. Go two or three stitches, stop, and readjust. And while you're doing this, you still got to maintain your half inch seam allowance from the needle to the edge of the fabric. If you sewed everything right without stretching, what you should do when you get down to the end is you should have a V created here. And at the point of this V should be your half inch seam allowance from here to the edge of your fabric. If it isn't, rip it out and start again. After you come to the end, take it, flip your top, start at center and go the other direction. I have a phobia about little threads, so every time I come to start again, you'll see me clipping the threads. I don't like threads hanging. <laughs> Same thing again. The top piece, for right now, until I get over here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this in my hand here. This hand is going to be on the other larger piece. And the way the pieces are stacked, you've got the pocket on the bottom, the forward section, which I'm going to control like this, and the top section which I'm going to control like this. Because you can take this finger under here, put it on your pocket, these fingers here, and this here, and control all of them at one time. Hold them in place, stack them, and sew to your fingers. And then let go of everything, readjust it, and continue again. Don't worry about trying to get this much of material all stacked up because you won't do it. You see how I'm controlling this piece with my hand this way, and I'm still controlling the top one this way. At 
The main thing is to stay away from this edge because this was the edge that will stretch. At this end, you can see that little V that's created again. This is the center of the V, which if you look from here to here, is your half inch seam allowance. If you've got that V created, you've done your patterning right, you're cutting correct, and you're sewing correct. I'm going to do the sew and top sew now. The way this gets top sewed is on the underneath, you can see we've got the pocket that we put in. This pocket needs to be so that it's toward you here. I'm going to be sewing the top sew in this direction because you're going to be sewing along here. That way when you go to flip it underneath, you're not catching the pocket. If you top sew it the other way, you're going to catch your pocket and it won't pull under. Just remember when you're doing this that you want to make sure that that pocket is laying forward and you're not top sewing through it. Because if you top sew it through it, you just blew the whole project. So now with the next step, and we're going to have to cut here for just a second, but the next step will be to sew the reinforcings on the side of the top to support the zippers. Now that we have the two halves of the top sewed together, the next step is to sew the pocket down. Now here's a place where when you pull the pocket over to mark where you're going to sew it down, bring it over, turn your half inch under to hide the raw edge, and put a mark back at the corner of that turn under. Why do we do this? We do it so that we can end up with a relief in that pocket so that there's a place for the frame to be. Somewhere we got a straight edge. Becky's got the straight edge. What she's going to do is draw a line between those two dots and then push the pocket back to that line to sew it down. That way it leaves a place in the pocket for the frame to be so that it won't be trying to poke its way up through the top when you put it on. <coughs> also, this is a place where we sew a little crow's foot on the end of this as opposed to a bar tack and it makes it a lot stronger. It's also one of the places where you want to be real careful when you're sewing. If you don't have your machine under control and you happen to sew off the end of that pocket one stitch, when you put it on the boat, the sun will come through that and it'll look like a crater and it'll leak like a river. So make sure that you don't sew off of the pocket by that one stitch. The next step after she gets the pocket sewed down is going to be to sew the facings on the underside of the top down both sides. That's what we cut the two and a half inch pieces for. And just to help her out, I've been folding the half inch under so that she can lay this on there, match the edges, and turn the half inch under and sew them down. The reason we put these on before we put the aft pocket and flap on is that I like to have the reinforcing piece 
on the underside go all the way through the top so that it's involved in the pocket and the flap. This strengthens the top so that it doesn't stretch when we put the zipper on for the side curtain. Now you'll understand why all of the zipper starts and stops were put on the outside of the material when we were working with the pattern, because if you'd have put them on the inside where they were easy to find to sew the zipper on, they'd have disappeared because they would have been under the facing. So they are on the outside of the top. We'll have to transfer them over. While she's right up here at this corner, she's going to sew a piece of vinyl across the front. Again, why to support the snaps. Now we're going to short circuit this just a little bit. We're not going to put it on the other side because what we do on this side, we side, we would have to do on the other side. But in the interest of time, we're just going to do this one. The next step that she has to do after this is sewed on is to put the aft pocket and flap on the aft end of the top. And they all go on together. So we better turn this face up, Becky, and lay that down and then put the pocket back in relationship to the top. And let's lay it so they can see all the pieces separately. And then here's the flap. All right, now this sequence of sewing this up, you have the top on the bottom of the pile face up. You have the flap next face down and then you have the pocket on top of that face up I'm sorry face down let me repeat that top face up flap face down pocket face down so that they'll finish correctly on the underside and these are the ones, these were, the flap was cut long so that we can cut it off on the other end to establish the length of it without taking all the time necessary to figure out what it would be. And because it is a straight flap, it's going to fight you just a little bit getting around that corner. So make sure you have everything under control when you go through that hole where the strap is going to be. Okay, what I've done here is I've got the notches lined up here from the body of the top and the uh, pocket. I've come over here and, and walked it out with my hands and I put a mark along here and along here just as reference points for lining up when I get to these points so I'm not getting it shuffled one way or the other. Your flap has to go in between that so I'm using my arm back here to hold it in place and lift this up. You take your flap, lay it up to the edge so that you create this triangle again. And this triangle again has to be one half inch from the, center, from the corner of the triangle out to the edge that's where I'm going to start sewing first. All I'm going to do is take two or three stitches to hold it down in place. Go back out to the edge of the fabric again, then lay this in place. Now, if you move this out of the way, you can still see I've got it all lined up here. But I'm just holding it in place with my elbow. So I'm lifting up the pieces, lining them up, holding them, and sewing them down. Now this is a straight flap, so you're going to have to ease that in as you go around this back edge because it's all up on a curve along with the pockets a curve the top is a curve so all I'm going to do is steer it the flap by going like this now I can here's where you can see the mark I made on the top as a reference to hold it 
that's being held in place, but I'm going to lift it up right here because this flap has to go underneath. And I'm going to steer this until I get over to here. Then I'm going to lay this right back down in place again because you still want all these edges right along here to be even. Now here I have to take the, the flap, push it into place, lay this down. Take two or three stitches because you're in the curve of the top and you have to make sure that all these edges are even. And what it is, is when you get up here, you should have your notches all lined up again. The way I'm holding my hands is I've got the flap between these two fingers. Open your fingers, slide this in, and you can steer these two edges like this and hold it down to this area right here all at the same time and just use this hand out here for steering. I can take all three of these edges right now and just hold them and steer them. And once you get into where you have to adjust this again because you're coming into the curve on the other side, then you can take it, bring your hands back together and sew it down. Okay, when you get down here, you've got a flap that's longer than your top. What I'm going to have to do is go back and cut this so that I create a V. Now, if you look here, the V is too big. Obviously, from here to here, it's longer than a half inch. If you cut it back so that you've got this V created with a half inch seam difference, and you just sew to the end. Slide the whole top back to you, turn it, and top sew it. Now what you're going to have is your pocket to your right, your flap to your right, and the body of the top to your left, creating the top sew overlap looking like this. If you take these, hold of these two pieces and this here, you can kind of pull it apart so that you get a nice crisp seam along here. You're going to be sewing down into a valley here because this is on the back curve of the frame where it goes around like this, so it's going to create kind of a pocket here. Some of them are sharper than others, so just sew like an inch, stop, adjust it, separate it, and sew again until you get out of that curve onto the straightaway across the back right here. You can see what's curling up behind me. This is that valley that I was talking about. It won't lay flat on the table. You're going to have the same kind of a valley created on the other end of the top. So just hold your fabric, pull it apart to create that seam. Come to the end. Bar tack it. Okay. All right, now the next step is to sew the pocket down. And this is a real critical part of this whole project. What you want to do is sew it down with a half inch turn under. And what you want to do is keep the top flat, the pocket flat, and the flap folded. And I want Becky to show you for sure what that looks like down here, that the top is flat on the bottom of the pile, the pocket is laying under there flat, and the flap is folded. This will make the difference of how this pocket sews down, and it will make the difference as to whether your top sucks down in front of the main frame, or whether it falls off the backage of the frame, or whether it comes out level as to where it belongs. So just remember, top flat, pocket flat, and flap folded. And say that fast and see what you come up with. <clears throat> now she's also cut a little triangle off on the end so that she can fold the half inch under and the pocket will be sewed down on the facing on the underside of the top because this is where all the tops used to rip out. So we've learned to do it this way so that we're on the facing and we start out sewing a little triangle. 
And this, again, spreads the strain out over a large area as to what is being the difference between that and a bar tack. And we've had to spend so much time repairing so many tops over the years that this is what we've come up with to make them strong so they don't rip out. Once again, top flat, pocket flat, and flat folded. See how good I am at saying that? You got to hear what it sounds like after two scotch and waters. Or after Becky drinks a couple mm -hmm. glasses of wine. Everybody's getting a little bit too heavy here, so I had to throw that in. Now when she gets this pocket sewed down, we are going to change just a little bit. We're not going to bind this whole top, because once you see her binding, binding is binding, okay? So I'm going to have her go back over and just do one half of the top as far as binding and put the two zippers on for the aft curtain and the side curtain, and that'll finish it up. So Becky, why don't we just bind that side over there and halfway across the back flap and then everybody will know that that has to all be bound. While she's binding this, I might mention the fact that if you want to make a few more dollars sometimes when you're selling your job, we found that a lot of times people will buy a color of a top that matches the boot stripe on their boat and then we'll put another color of binding on. And in actual fact, it doesn't cost us any more, but we charge a little more just because we have to have that other color of binding. But it's a way to make an extra buck, and it makes the top look real sharp. It kind of trims it out. You ready for your zippers, Becky? Mm -hmm. Okay, now she's got to transfer the zipper starts and stops to the inside of the top. And remember, our zippers stop at the front end and start at the aft end. She's putting the side curtain zipper on, which is right here. And the guide for putting this zipper on is to lay the tape of the zipper up to the seam line that sewed the facing down and sew another seam down through the zipper and that will give you two parallel seams to show on the outside. Make sure you have the stop at the stop. Is this the right one? It's kind of short. Yes ma'am. Kind of short. <laughs> You'll be all right. The other zipper that's going on for the aft curtain is going on the flap on the underside and it's going to start at where the mystery dot would be. Now the mystery dot was on the side curtain, it got transferred to the forward curtain, but it's not here on the top because there was never a flap there at the, that point in time. So Becky's going to show you how to run the center of the zipper line to infinity out through the flap and create the mystery dot on the flap. And the guide that we use here to sew the zipper down is to lay the zipper tape up against the edge of the pocket and sew it down. Okay, this mystery dot is right here because what I'm doing is putting the stop of the zipper up to this line right here. And where this hits this line, that's the mystery dot. And she's going to sew that zipper on and it's going to come out to within one half inch of the center of the flap on the top. Oh, yeah. Again, you're sewing down in the bottom of a bucket, so make sure you Keep control of your zipper. Don't shrink it or stretch it. <coughs> now while she's finishing it out, that up, that's going to conclude the sewing of the top, but we got one more little item that we have to show you 
that has to be part of the top, and that is the strap that holds it back. And we have it cut ahead of time and started. Now, while she's sewing, I'll explain how this whole zipper or how this whole strap works. Here's all the parts that it takes to do it. We have a buckle and we use a stainless steel one inch bar buckle. We don't use the uh, brass one because it'll break from all the pressure we put on it. We have a six inch piece of webbing and we have an 18 inch piece of webbing that are sewed onto that buckle. And we use the heavyweight nylon webbing. You have two different size holes in the buckle. You have a small hole and a large hole and you want to look at it with the bar facing up. And she's going to put the six inch piece in the small hole of the buckle to form a handle and bring it back to itself and sew it down. And while, while I was talking here, you noticed her shortening the stitches up on the machine. The reason she did that, it gives you a little more time to control this because you're going to go back and forth to sew this down to make a handle. All I'm sewing is a Z. I've come across here a couple times, sewn through the center and back, just kind of sewing a Z into the... The next thing she's going to do is take the 18 inch piece and put it down through the large hole. And bring her back around and take a half turn in it as she brings it around. That way when we put it on the frame, it lays down nice and flat. And she's going to sew that on with a box or with a Z. Now, in the interest of time, we cheated just a little bit. We took the balance of the webbing and we already sewed a snap to it on one end of it. And that's the snap that's going to attach the strap to the boat. All right, now what she's going to do with this now is feed it up through. She's going to hold the buckle up with the bar facing up. And there's two different size holes in this buckle now. So she's going to feed it through with the strap coming up through the large hole and down through the small hole. And wait a minute, Becky, we forgot the loop. Or did you put it on? Well. I always put it on before I do this. Yeah, we always have a little loop there that we sew on, so let's slide the loop on ahead of time. I forget that every time. I usually get it all sewed up and I realize I've forgotten it. <clears throat> Again, up through the large hole, down through the small one. Bring it down and up through the loop from the bottom side. About an inch. And sew those two together. The reason that's put on there is so that the end of that strap won't be flopping in a breeze when you're running down the waterway. <clears throat> when she gets that sewed up, I'll give you the final explanation on why this strap works so well. Explain, Becky, and use my finger as the piece of pipe that you got to put this around and show them why we took the half turn in that. Can you do that? Okay, if this was the frame, you're going to come over the top of your frame with the part that has the half loop in it around, bring your strap through here, and bring it in and tighten it up. And this is what the knot looks like when it's on the frame. It looks like a a man's tie when it's tied in place, but it makes for a nice flat look on the frame. This end, 
gets hooked to the deck eye on the boat. And then to tighten the top, you pull on this part here that's on the slide, and this tightens it. To, to release it, you take the six-inch tab that we sewed on and lift it up and yank upwards, and it puts uh, slack into the here, into the strap, so that you can unhook this from the deck eye. Now to do this once again, so that you can see it, you've got our strap all sewn up. You got your frame, you take the strap, come over the top side of the frame, around, take your strap down through the loop, This frame keeps moving back. Tighten it up so that this knot looks like the, a man's uh, tie that's tied. This end hooks down to the deck eye on the boat. Then to tighten the top, grab this part here that you've sewn into this black loop. Grab the forward section and pull on it. Now, I can't do it here because there's nothing uh, to do it with. Pull and on this. It's not strong enough to fight her. Pull this and it tightens the strap between these two points. To release that strap, to release the pressure so that you can unhook this end from the boat, come back and grab the six inch tab that was sewn in, pull up and it releases this up here and brings it down to, to loosen it so that you can take this off of the deck eye. And that concludes all the sewing parts that are needed for a convertible top. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors, the people from Glen Raven Mills Incorporated, who manufactures Umbrella, Unitex Incorporated, a nationwide distributor, and W.L. Gore & Associates, using creative technologies worldwide in the making of Gore-Tex sewing thread. Join us again when we show you how to increase your profits and save time and effort with the Marine Canvas Training Institute programs. Sherry. You know, you've done a fantastic job, but you know what? what? I'm sick of working. Let's go fishing. Okay, Don. Let's fish.